Oh, hello. I hope you're doing well. Happy, happy cocktail and coaching day, dear merchants. I'm really excited to have you and host you in Coaching with Cocktails. This is where you'll get your retail industry how-to served alongside your favorite happy hour cocktail. And this is mine. Um, today, we are diving into vendor partnerships, specifically the characteristics of a very successful partnership between a retailer and a manufacturer or a retailer and a maker. And our cocktail here is called the Jungle Bird, so I'll be sharing that recipe shortly. Now, my name is Chris Gio, and I am the founder of Merchant Method. I am an educator and a retail consultant with 19 years of experience in the retail and manufacturing industry. And earlier today, I was counting how long I've been an educator for this industry, and it's been 15 years. And I love it. I love teaching inventory-based businesses how to do it better. Now, I started Merchant Method in 2012 because I found this need for already established inventory-based businesses, those that are already in business, and I help you learn how to build retail profit with ease. So I just need to give you a shout out for letting me start at 4.30, a half hour past the start of our happy hour time. To be perfectly honest with you, um, my kids came home on the bus late, about 45 minutes late. It was to be expected, but I felt like I wanted to win at life and at work. So I pushed the call back 30 minutes and I really appreciate your flexibility. Now for those of you watching the replay, I also need to give another shout out to a merchant like we, Ana Maria Munoz. She is the owner and the curator behind Port of Raleigh in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, Port of Raleigh is a local store that curates home goods from all around the world. And I met Ana Maria towards the end of last year, and all year long, she has been following my live stream videos and my video-based training over on the blog, Retail Trends, and she just had this wonderful thing to share that I thought I'd share with you, and she wrote me and had commented and said, Chris, this is beyond helpful and encouraging for business owners like myself who are a few years in. There's so much out there for how to get started, but it's tough to find good resources for the in-business part of small retail. And that's exactly what we're doing, Merchant. I know that you have already launched a successful business and you're looking for ways to streamline, to gain more efficiency, to stay compelling and competitive in this marketplace. So our topic today is vendor partnerships and it comes to us by way of Portland, Oregon. So another shout out goes to Kayla Burke of Kayla Burke Design. Last week, I posted an all call, ask me anything, and she sent in a very juicy question that that is multi-layered. And so what we're doing today is just peeling back one of the layers of the onion to explore one facet of her great question. Now, if you're not familiar with Kayla Brook Design, she is a nature crafter. And so she finds dried flowers and lichen and um, bits found in the Oregon area. And then she just captures them in these resin cast crystals. They're quite gorgeous. So before we get there, I don't know about you, but I need um, a breather and I need a sip of this cocktail. Mm. And I'm going to tell you what's in a jungle bird. So uh, this is a cocktail that my husband loves and started making for me. And uh, we went to liquor.com to find out where it hails from. And this particular cocktail was developed in 1978 in a hotel bar called the Aviary, Aviary Bar um, in Kuala Lumpur at the Hilton. And so it's made up. You might want to write this down if you are into recipes. Now, you absolutely do not need a cocktail to be with me today. You can come with water, coffee, tea, kombucha, but you're definitely going to need something to write with. Okay. One and a half ounces of dark rum and one and a half ounces of pineapple juice. 
then you mix in three quarters of an ounce of Campari, and that's in aperitif that has bitters, it's pink. And then it's a half ounce of fresh squeezed lime juice and a half ounce of simple syrup, which is one part water, one part sugar. And then I just fill my shaker with a bunch of ice cubes and I slap on the pint glass on top of it and I shake it sideways until that shaker becomes so cold. And then I strain it into a glass. You can strain it into any glass. This is called a Nicanora glass. Um, and I love it. So like I said, um, if you come with water, that's great. However you come, I'm excited you're here. You'll want to make sure you have a paper and pen or pencil or something to write with because um, we're going kind of quickly here. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments below, whether you're asking your questions live or you're watching the recording, I will circle back and answer your questions. So when I say vendor partnerships, I know what I mean, but I don't know if you know what I mean. So it's best to start with defining what a vendor partnership is. So really a successful vendor partnership is a relationship between two or more businesses that is mutually beneficial. And each individual in that partnership is acutely aware that their individual success is directly related to the success of their partner or their partners. That's what a vendor partnership is. And now what it's not, it's not a concept for corporate roles or corporate companies, and it's not a milestone of achievement. Vendor partnerships are all around us, and so I want you to be receptive to this idea and receptive to the two-way nature of business to business because that's what every business operates with the partnership of another business. So if you're skeptical, I want you to think about if you've hired a photographer or a copywriter, that's a vendor partnership. If you buy into a subscription through a SaaS provider, a software as service provider like your web host, or if you've paid for social media advertising through Facebook or Instagram, that's a vendor partnership. Now for us that play in the inventory-based business space. If you have a wholesale account, if you write orders, you're in a partnership with your counterpart, retailer, maker, small batch manufacturer, even if it is a consignment-based retailer or a broker, kind of like Etsy Wholesale or Fair, you're in a partnership. So I hope you know this applies to you. And as we investigate the characteristics of a successful partnership, uh, this is an amazing opportunity for you to evaluate the health of your partnerships now, to appreciate the successful and healthy ones, and to shore up the ones that might be on shaky ground. You'll want to do this now before you go forward, any time of the year, but particularly as we kick off fall, because fall rolls right into holiday, and for you retailers and makers, this is the start of your holiday success. I'm really passionate about it, can you tell? Okay, so let's talk about characteristic number one. Every successful partnership has a clear purpose or benefit. So I'm gonna say it again. Every successful vendor partnership has a clear purpose or benefit. Now, one partner, now you're allowed to have favorite partners. <laughs> a partner may come to mind immediately, maybe two but there are vendor partnerships all around us. And so if you want to really evaluate the current state of all your partnerships, go ahead and ask yourself these two questions. I'm asking myself these questions too. So the first one is, how does this partner serve my customers, my mission, and align with my brand values? So how does this partner serve my customers my mission and align with my brand values you get to decide that it doesn't have this partner doesn't have to meet every requirement this is not binary it's not black and white there can be shades of color and shades and tones of gray you get to decide but i want you to decide with awareness and then the second question is what makes this vendor partner right for you and that's a question you should ask all the time, 
seasonally. Now we can talk about seasons in terms of retail selling cycles. We can talk about them in calendar seasons. We can talk about them in quarters or annually, but there are also seasons in where you are as an entrepreneur, where you are as a business leader. Sometimes they coincide with a typical season and sometimes they don't. Vendors may also change seasonally and it's great to really evaluate that fit and that partnership with frequency. It's like falling in love with your partner all over again or taking that great vacation with your best friend every year or twice a year. It's great to revisit it. All right, so the second characteristic is are you able to clearly communicate your needs? And what I'm going to tell you right now is I'm just going to clearly communicate that I'm going to take a quick sip. Mm -hmm. So are you able to clearly communicate your needs? What we can't presume is that your vendor partner knows what's in your head. It is not going to set them up for success, number one. And number two, by forcing yourself to clearly communicate, you're ahead of the game because it takes several layers of peeling back the onion, of asking why, of explaining over and over again for individuals to achieve clarity of thought. We're not born with clear thoughts. We don't start a business with clear thoughts. We have to take opportunities to go through exercises so that we can achieve clarity. And we can't presume our vendor partner is really clear about us as counterparts. So here are a couple of questions that you should ask yourself. What does this vendor need to know about my customers, about my mission, and about my brand values? Absolutely, all of this stuff is likely available publicly. It's available on your website. Perhaps you email about it weekly through your email service provider. It's all over social media, all over your collateral. What you don't want to do is make your vendor work harder than they're already working or work for things that aren't going to move the needle in a mutually beneficial way. Make it clear for them and make it easy. Also, it changes over time. Are they aware of your change? The second question to ask is, what does this vendor need to know about my specific goal in working with them? There are any number of vendors with talent and capability with the ability to help make our dreams come true. Why this vendor? Why now? It could be a general thing, it could be a very specific thing, they're not going to know unless you're aware and clear enough to explain it. And then the third question to ask yourself is, what does this vendor need to understand about working with me? What does this vendor need to understand about working with me? So really specifically, do you have a partnership style and do they know it? Because just as there are as many partnerships, there are as many partnership styles. We're talking more than just someone being introverted or extroverted, more than does a person like small talk or getting right down to business. There's all types of combinations. And being a student of your own leadership and your own learning and being able to communicate that is going to make you both successful. What do they need to understand about your availability to make the partnership go? It takes gas from both you know, gas stations to make the singular engine move forward, how available are you to pump gas? I don't know if that's a good metaphor, but I hope you understand me. <laughs> and then lastly, what are your communication preferences? Just because you email, is that really your preference for this season of business? Or just because a text chain happened, is that really the most efficient way to communicate? You are absolutely allowed to pause right after you're evaluating a vendor partnership and say, hey, what actually is going to be right for the both of us and for me? What's going to be right for my customers? Do I need to redefine it? How can we explore this together? So successful vendor partnerships allow you to clearly communicate your needs. And if you can't, and you need to make choices, at least you're aware, you're more aware, I'm making this choice at the expense of this other thing. 
So the third characteristic is uh, having a really clear understanding of what your vendor needs and having your understanding be aligned with theirs. So often what I like to say is um, the most important thing is that two people are in alignment with what the situation is, not if the situation is up or not if the situation is down, but that both people agree that the situation is up, both people agree that the situation is down. Because once you're clear that your perspectives are aligned, you can actually do something about it. So do you understand who your vendor serves, what their mission is, and what their brand values are? Because you as a partner are part of their larger portfolio. Chances are they want all of their clients to bolster their entire brand. So are you clear about that and what your role is in bolstering their entire brand? It doesn't mean that you have to go out on social and give them more praises than you normally would. It doesn't mean that you have to advertise on their behalf if you wouldn't normally, but you need to understand how you fit in their coterie of clients. What do you need to know about helping your vendor partner being successful? I'm going to start that again. <laughs> what do you need to know about helping your vendor partner successfully do the job you hired them to do? Vendor partnerships are rarely let's pitch it over the fence and it's theirs. Rarely. There's always some level of defining scope providing resources, answering questions. So are you clear on what your contributions are in their success for doing the thing you want? That's an important question. Number three is how does your vendor like to work with other businesses? Now, you may have shared how you like to receive information, but understanding how your partner likes to receive information, if it's different than your own style, you've just learned how to make it past their eyes into their brain or through their ears into their heart. You've just learned how to shape a message that is more likely to be received if they have a different style than yours. So are you clear on what their partnership style is, their communication style, their availability? The one other thing you want to know is if they have system requirements that you may or may not be aware of. If you don't ask the question, uh, it may surprise you. Or if you don't ask the question, you may not ever learn that there's an easier way to do things. They might use a communication tool like Slack or have an electronic data interface, an EDI interface that um, makes it easy for you to share information back and forth. you got to ask the question to know. And after you find all that out, you need to ask yourself, are there any conflicts? Now that you know that need to be addressed or um, solved as you think about moving forward, as you sign your next contract before you start, there's always opportunities to say, are we good? Awesome, let's move on. Or are we good? How can we make it better? When you're aware of how you're aligning and each of your contributions to a successful partnership, you can just make it better and better. And so a lot of people don't realize that the start of successful partnership is seeded very early on. And if you can seed that early on and continue to visit it and tend it, orders, more production, Everything else that happens related to inventory <laughs> and revenue and profit is going to grow exponentially and exponentially benefit both of you. So that is our exploration of vendor partnerships. If you have thoughts on that or questions, please let me know. I'm going to go ahead and go into Facebook because, you know, I don't know if you know this, but when you go on Facebook Live, it doesn't like to let you know that people have questions. And so I want to know if people have questions. So in review, the three characteristics are every successful partnership has a clear purpose or benefit. You are able to clearly communicate your needs and you have an aligned understanding of your partner's needs. Honestly, this is no different than a romantic partnership or a really good, highly functional friendship. No one can read our minds. We can't read someone else's minds. Let's use our words. 
All right. I want to thank you so much for joining me. It's been absolutely fun. Thank you so much, Allison. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, if you have a question, if you've enjoyed it, can you please leave a comment below? That would just like tickle me to no end and help me understand how to continue to roll with, you know, coaching with cocktails. Um, leave me digital hearts. And if you have a question, pause for sip. Hmm. You can DM me here on the Facebook page or through Instagram at Merchant Method. Now, what I do every week is I reach out to my insiders and let them know when special content and training is coming up. I give them just a little bit more than anyone else gets, and I want you to be an insider. So if you're not, go to merchantmethod.com. In my footer, you can sign up for updates. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been a giant Monday for me. I was live earlier in the day doing virtual co-working for accountability and to jumpstart the week. Live again today, I had a kindergartner start school and a five-year-old get braces. So this has been an epic day and it just would not be the same without you. So until we connect next week or by email, um, stay tuned in. Bye. Have an awesome week, Merchant. Catch you later.